stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on OLED because of burn-in? Well, we might have a solution for you. Not this year and maybe not next year, but in the horizon because the inventors of OLED technology themselves, the actual people that supplies the chemicals and the science behind OLED to LG, Universal Display, have been developing a solution to stabilize OLED so that it doesn't burn in. It's called plasmonics. Plasmonics, never heard of it until today. Not plasma, plasmonics. So basically, quick background, right? The reason OLED gets burned in at all is because it is organic and organic materials are unstable in general, especially when exposed to heat, which in a TV can get pretty hot. And burn-in is because when an image stays on that screen, the same image, well, it's heating up that OLED in that one area over and over. And over time, because OLED does have a finite life, those same pixels, you're shortening the life of that pixel because it's just sitting there. <laughs> Static image, it's a finite life and it's cumulative, right? Well, plasmonics is supposed to stabilize and avoid that shorter life, basically making OLED burn in free. Well, that's the promise at least. And here's the important part. Universal Display and LG Display recognize that unless they solve for burn in, OLED is not going to be long lived. Let's check out this other article by Display Daily, segues perfectly. What we're seeing is that although OLED is currently still superior in certain areas, LCD TV technology, QLED, Mini LED, are catching up fast. You saw my recent comparisons with the H9G where, well, I can help but say, look, in a dark room, there are so many dark scenes where this H9G, 95 to 98% of OLED, scene after scene after scene. Yes, there are a few scenes where it just exposes the weaknesses of the H9G, and that still is blooming, subtitles, the occasional lifted black, but it's never gotten so close, right? The last 5% of those challenging scenes, yeah, OLED kills it, but the other 95%, all for under $1,000, and that's the crazy part. The H9G is just under 1000 The best OLED out there today, whether it's LG C10 or the Sony A8H, is close to $2,000. That's double more than double the H9G. And that's OLED's second problem. Not only is LCD TV catching up in the strengths to meet the strengths of OLED, but the price is still half. I mean, it's better than a few years ago where it would have been a quarter the price, right? But half the price is still too much for most consumers to buy in, especially when you throw in burn-in, right? And then you limit the peak brightness. Let's not even talk about that. OLED can never get above a thousand nits because partially due to burn-in, the brighter you get an OLED, the shorter its life. So they have to maintain or limit the brightness to a certain degree, and that's going to be under a thousand nits. Okay, now we know the issue with OLED. What does plasmonics do? Well, plasmonics is supposed to stabilize the OLED you know, through its magical science, right? I'm not even going to go into, into the actual science because I really don't know. It's like, how does a refrigerator work? It keeps my food cold. That's all we care about. So plasmonics, assuming the universal display can figure this out, it will extend the relevance of OLED for TV displays at least because as quickly as LCD TVs are catching up with quantum dot color filters and mini LED and who knows what other magic will come in the horizon, OLED has hit its peak. First of all, its color gamut, it's not gonna get any wider with the current technology today, and it's not gonna get any brighter, right? It needs to find a way to solve for burn and so that it can get brighter and use other technologies to beat LCD TV at its own game, and the other technology is quantum dot. OLED, QD OLED. So QD OLED brings the quantum dot into the forefront as a color filter instead of backlight technology. Quantum dot becomes a color filter. So OLED could just then focus as being a blue light, a bright blue light. But OLED blue light is the least stable of the OLED colors. And if you make it super bright, well, it's going to deteriorate faster than ever. Q in plasmonics. You see how well they play together? If plasmonics can solve the burn-in issue like Universal Display expects, suddenly 
Plasmonix, QD OLED. Together, we will get two things for OLED now. Peak brightness will finally exceed 1,000 nits and wider color gamut that's being promised by LCD TVs and their quantum dot technology. So, how far are we away from this stack with Plasmonix? Obviously, it's years away, but they are working overtime to solve this problem because the Chinese and their mini LED and the Taiwanese and their next generation quantum dot color filter, inkjet printed everything, they're catching up fast. And you saw the H9G darkroom performance, right? With its minimal lifted blacks. It can't get here fast enough for OLED. And unless they get this out into the market in the next two years or so, I, I think OLED's going to start losing relevance because already I expect next year it's going to be very difficult for OLED to say they are the superior technology. Now, there are a few things that OLED does better regardless of what LCD TV does. And one of them is input lag, right? Latency. It's because there are less display layers in the OLED stack that would add to input lag. Whereas an LCD TV, you have the backlight, you have the control of the full array local dimming zones. You have all these layers that all require separate controls. And that's why Samsung, when it's in game mode, it disables a lot of those controls so that you get the fastest input lag possible. But what happens? Colors suddenly wash out. The blacks start to lift, right? The full array local dimming zone is on sleep. It's not a good experience. OLED, even though it's in game mode, much of that picture quality is preserved while keeping latency low. And LCD TVs, I don't think it's going to solve for that anytime soon, just because of the multiple layers that is there to, well, fight the issues inherent in LCD TVs, right? Lifted blacks and all that other stuff. So OLED still has that one advantage left, and that's latency. So it is great for gaming if it could only solve for the burning, which appears to be realistic, right? This looks like a legitimate technology. Well, we'll see, because at the end of the day, both Universal Display and LG Display, they're all in on OLED. And if they can't solve for burning, so that they can move forward with other improvements, brightness, and a wider color gamut, well, they're gonna be passed by LCD TVs and their mini LEDs. What do you guys think? Are you willing to wait for OLED to get better? Or you've already written off OLED and are just waiting for mini LED TVs to come down in price? Until next time, stop the phone.